The oceans are vast. They cover 70% of our planet and 90% of its habitable space. And most of the biodiversity in the largest ecosystems on Earth is unknown. The goal of this project is to increase our capacity to track marine biodiversity at large scales and in real time. Some of the most exciting and most urgently needed applications are related to marine protected areas. The Stanford Center for Ocean Solutions has been partnering with the Palau International Coral Reef Center to help monitor the space within the Palau National Marine Sanctuary and their national waters. Palau is such a tiny, tiny little dot, but it's one of the largest conservation areas in the world. Conservation is naturally instilled in the Palauan culture, especially our marine resources. We can learn so much from just one water sample. Environmental DNA is the skin cells or DNA, extracellular DNA, that's been sloughed off from organisms as they're moving through their environment. And as we collect an environmental sample like water, that water contains the DNA of organisms that live in that area. It is really challenging to collect eDNA of many, many different organisms and get marine preserve wide data on who is there. Currently, in order to be able to collect eDNA for monitoring, we have to physically go out on a research vessel or on a boat to be able to collect those samples. As you can imagine, studying the offshore area takes a lot of time, takes a lot of money, and takes a lot of collaboration. And that process generally works really well, but there's a multi-day, if not multi-week, lead time to be able to understand and interpret the results from the environment where you've collected the samples. The vision is for users all over the world, scientists, communities, resource managers, to be able to characterize the diversity of coastal and offshore marine systems by using these new technologies based on optical sensors. My work focusing on nanophotonics has developed light-based sensors that can be deployed in the field to be able to monitor environmental DNA. We have essentially a light emitting diode that sits right beneath our sensor and then a camera on top of it. We can look at different DNA sequences when they've landed on each of our sensors. And by virtue of how those sensors are lighting up, determine what has landed on that sensor. So this chip is less than one inch squared that has hundreds of thousands of sensors on it potentially. Where we're looking towards is something that can be out in the environment for a period of time that is more accessible to everyone globally. I'm really excited about the scientific development here on campus and helping to bring some of our sensors into the hands of folks who can really benefit from the data that's being produced. Oftentimes where these types of technologies fail is that you're not meeting the needs of the user. In whatever field that we work in, we work in a little bubble. Involvement with people in different areas brings in new ideas and collaborations show you different routes that could possibly happen. One of the aspects of that that is particularly important to me is understanding how the research that we do in the lab can at least answer questions that water resource managers who are understanding what their marine preserves contain might find useful. It's very unique to have the resources to reach out beyond the university at a very early stage in your scientific process. Now is the time for action. We no longer have time on our side in order to find solutions that address some of the world's biggest challenges. There is an urgent need to democratize science and make discovery and its applications widely accessible to ocean users all over the world.